ASIO or ASIO drivers, I don't know the right pronunciation, Steinberg, uh, the company who makes that standard didn't come back to me yet on that, so I don't know. Uh, they are not a replacement for your Windows or Mac drivers, they are an add-on drivers, yeah, so uh, they will not um, overclock your sound card, <laughs> don't, will not make it, you know, somehow uh, better, however, they will allow you to get the most out of your sound device, be it a sound card, USB interface, like I have um, Behringer UMC uh, interface and also uh, things like Zoom F uh, H5 or Zoom H1. These drivers, um, they work with specific uh, audio and video software as well. So they will not work with your average uh, multimedia player or with your games, you know. So they will work with things like Adobe CC Audition, uh, Adobe uh, maybe Premiere Pro, uh, OBS Studio, possibly uh, some other uh, audio video programs as well but nothing else really. So how they work. So first of all, you need to install standard Windows drivers uh, for your device, uh, whatever that may be, and uh, configure them correctly. And only then install and configure and use all ASIO drivers. So let's uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so once you connect your devices, you need to go to audio settings and it could be here, but in my case it's actually uh, Realtek HD Audio Manager and I have audio devices. So I open the menu and then I go to recording and then I have my Behringer. Uh, so it's, it's the full name of the device actually Behringer Euphoria UMC 204 HD. So uh, make sure that the levels are at 100%, usually that works best. Uh, no enhancement, so disable everything and advanced. Now here's where you can uh, choose the settings you want. I suggest that you start with something simple like this one, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Do not go straight away uh, to the highest level because that's not necessary really and will, will not really give you an advantage unless you know obviously what you're doing. Um, but generally you should set everything uh, if you're using many devices at the same time for one recording, set everything to the same level. And usually most things support 48 kilohertz or 44 uh, kilohertz. So I usually use 48 kilohertz because everything I have supports that. So set this, make sure that this is set there. The same with everything else. So um, Zoom H5, again, levels 200%. Choose the settings here, uh, again, 48 kilohertz, that's the highest that Zoom H5 will support through USB. By the way, this is an interesting thing. So Windows shows four channels, but really it will only give you access to two channels. At least that's what I've got. I couldn't make it give me access to four channels, but ASIO drivers can access four channels. So make sure that you choose four channels here, 24 bits, 48 uh, kilohertz, and uh, click OK. And once you have set all your devices to that, then it's the time to start installing ASIO drivers. So uh, let's see what it looks like. So first of all, I want to say that ASIO is a sh um, an acronym for Audio Stream Input Output, and it's a computer sound card driver protocol for digital audio specified by Steinberg. It's a, a German company. So I suggest you read this article because it will uh, give you a good overview. It's a short article, but it will give you a quick overview of what's possible, what's not. Okay, so the next thing to do is to go to the uh, website of uh, the manufacturer and download ASIO dri drivers specifically for your device. So in, in my case, Behringer Computer Audio Interfaces, UMC Drivers, ASIO, and then I have uh, options here and I've chosen this one and it works for me really well. For Zoom H1, same thing, go to the downloads, click uh, on the appropriate, so, uh, so this one, ASIO driver, download it and install it. And uh, Zoom H5, same thing, download uh, and install the drivers for. Now, here's an interesting thing. Uh, there's something not right with these drivers. So uh, the stereo drivers never worked for me. And this is the latest version 4.0.6. And the multi-track drivers, they only worked for me, but not this one, not 401, 
but the older driver 2.1 that worked for me when i installed this it just didn't work i uninstalled them and 2.1 worked but never for stereo mode so my zoom h5 only works in multi-track mode through usb okay so that is interesting now once you have that configure that for your device and make sure that everything works now uh, asio drivers they have different control panels so every manufacturer has got its own control panel so for example uh, let's start with Beringer umc so Beringer umc has got uh, this thing so number of samples safe mode then it shows me a uh, current sample and some other uh, things latency I'll, I'll come back to it in a moment format again the output i'm not interested really in output input is what i'm interested in and that's set correctly this is the status and current sample rate as i uh, it's the same one as i set in uh, windows uh, driver setting yeah so make sure that this is uh, the same everywhere uh, it's very important because uh, asia drivers very in my case i couldn't kind of override those settings. So once I set them in Windows, that's what uh, ASIO drivers could use, nothing else. Uh, also, if there were some inconsistencies, ASIO drivers didn't really work, I had conflicts and all sorts of uh, trouble. So set everything consistently. So UMC drivers, they start with the system and I can also find them in my start menu if I type UMC so this is the control panel i can call it from here as well so this is by behringer and this is the version of um, of the drivers yeah okay so if i want zoom drivers the control panel for zoom it's actually in the control panel so let's go to control panel now we see we've got h and f series audio and this one this one is actually for Zoom H1. This one works for my uh, Zoom H1 device and you can see uh, version 3.1 and I suggest buffer size 2048. That's a very safe uh, number. Uh, this one, I think this setting you can probably ignore. Uh, whereas this one, multi-track audio, uh, this one is for my Zoom H5 and uh, you can see the driver is 2.1. As I said, 4.0 didn't work for me. And again, you've got this advanced option and uh, make sure that this is also applied correctly. Uh, so 48 kilohertz, not 44. So that's uh, Zoom. So once you have set the ASIO drivers in the control panel, you can do something else. You can install ASIO for all drivers and that is important this is that is very useful actually so if you're planning to use many devices from many manufacturers and use them together in one piece of software for example in uh, Adobe Audition then you, you the only option you have is ASIO for all and I'll show you in a moment why so first of all install ASIO for all so this this website looks a little bit uh, cheap but you know it's run by one guy he's a really cool guy most probably I don't know him, but you know, bless him. Um, download the latest ones. However, warning for me, the latest ones didn't work. So I went one back 2.13 and they worked really well. So um, make sure that uh, you'd never give up. If you install one version and it doesn't work, go uh, to a previous version and that might save your uh, problem. So install it. And when you install ASIO for all drivers, make sure that you choose the offline option and uh, when you choose the offline option you will get the control panel available all the time so if i type here asio for all um, i've got this offline setting so i'll get this menu so i have this menu and now i can configure all my devices even when they are not connected or when they are uh, not invoked by any device so how ASIO drivers work, so they work on top of Windows drivers, so the specific software that you use, so OBS Studio or Adobe Audition will kind of, let's say, invoke those drivers, will call them, and that uh, control panel may pop up if you choose the right option, I'll show you in a moment. So you can do this offline, so to say, and I'm going to enable my Behringer device. Uh, let's see, okay, I'm going to... I'm not interested in the output. I'm only interested in input. And uh, Zoom H1, it's not connected, so I'm not going to 
turn it on. Zoom H5, it is connected. I'm using it, so I'm not going to enable it right now, just uh, just in case. Uh, actually, yeah, let me see if I enable it. Going to, yeah, now everything's enabled. Again, I'm not interested in out at the moment. I'm only interested in in. Okay, so that's what uh, what I do. Okay, so what's the next step? So once I've configured ASU drivers for all, now I'm ready to start uh, recording using those drivers. So let's say I want to start with OBS Studio. Um, first of all, you need to go to OBS website and get this add-on for ASIO. And without that add-on, you will not see this menu here. Uh, so you need to install it separately. Once you do it, you have this ASIO menu here, and then you can choose your active devices. At the moment, I'm using the Behringer UMC, uh, but I can switch to this. I'm not gonna do it because I'm actually recording uh, now using uh, uh, OBS. So I can go to settings, and this is the settings, and I can set all those things here. Again, this is an active device now, so UMC ASIO drivers, and I, if I go to ASIO for all, this is not active as you can see. And again, settings here, and now the difference you can see, here is 512 uh, buffer size, and here 2048. I've noticed that ASIO for all is not as reliable as um, UMC, or other dedicated ASIO drivers, so I prefer to set it to something higher, I believe it glitches less and um, that's what I'm using. So I recommend you do that as well. However, it does work with lower buffer as well. However, every now and then it, it just suddenly the sound goes or something happens with it. And then I need to reset some settings before it goes back to normal, which is a bit weird. But anyway, that's, that's how it is. So I'm not changing anything in OBS. So that's how it would work. And obviously you then add all the devices as you would. So you choose ASIO input for an ASIO device and audio input capture for normal Windows drivers device. So fairly straightforward. Now the advantage of OBS Studio over Adobe Audition is that I can use both devices at the same time. So I can use Windows devices, audio devices and ASIO. Uh, devices at the same time, which is very useful sometimes. For example, if I want to uh, use ASIO drivers for my Behringer uh, audio interface, so I'm recording now using the microphones and I can have output through my speakers or headphones so I can actually hear what's happening. Whereas in um, Adobe Audition, I cannot do it. I'll show you in a moment how. The only limitation, as I said, is that I can only use one set of ASIO drivers at the same time, but I can use ASIO drivers and Windows drivers at the same time. Okay, so let's look at Adobe Audition. Okay, in Adobe Audition, uh, we can either go to Edit, Preferences, Audio Hardware, and then we've got this uh, lovely menu uh, with all the uh, settings we want to set. And again, we can choose either Windows devices, so that would be MME, and there is nothing else we can use. And if we click on settings, it will call the Windows uh, menu. And so that's how it works. Or we can choose ASIO drivers. I'm gonna choose ASIO for all. I'm not gonna switch to UMC because that will mess up my recording right now. I can show you what happens when I choose zoom. There is an error, I've had it. So this one never worked for me. This one works for me, but this time it doesn't work probably because I'm uh, using it with another piece of software uh, right now. Uh, but I was able to use uh, that uh, driver. Also, I Oh yeah, there is an option to choose 48, which is great as well. Sometimes uh, I even didn't have that option. It, it's crazy how ASIO drivers work sometimes. It, it's a bit of a trouble. But once you figure it out, it all works great. So uh, let's go back to ASIO for all. Now, as I said, I'm going to choose the highest buffer number possible, 2048, sample rate 48. Now, make sure, this is important, make sure that your Adobe Audition multi-track document, as they call it, is also set to 48 kilohertz. You can mix and match 24 bits with 16 bits, but keep the sample rate the same across all devices, all documents, uh, and so on and so on. And now, if I click Settings, 
uh, the ASIO for all menu will come back. Now, he here's the thing. ASIO for all has got this advantage uh, over other drivers that it supports practically every device. Uh, some better, some worse, obviously. So I could still have uh, an output to my speakers. However, because I'm using them somewhere else, uh, they are unavailable. But if I set things correctly, you know, restart my computer and everything, uh, usually this is available, so I can use ASIO drivers, plus I can um, I can uh, use my Windows devices through ASIO as well. So this is cool. So make sure you turn on all the devices you want, and within those devices, whatever you want to have active. So in, for me, it's in and in uh, and out only here. But I'm not going to use it right now, so shall I switch it off? No, I'll, I'll keep it on. Then make sure again buffer is uh, set to the very uh, to the highest possible. If you have any trouble, you can always use these options: resample or force uh, Windows drivers to 16-bit. Uh, you can in increase latency here as well, um, but most of the time you should be okay. So once that's done, by the way, uh, again you can switch to simple mode or advanced mode and uh, reset the settings if you mess things up. Okay, uh, let me check now if my recording is fine. Yeah, audio recording is fine. So uh, I click, do I want to click OK? Yes, let me see. I click OK and now I have the options. This is my uh, Behringer UMC interfaces. This is my all four of my wind, uh, sorry, Zoom H5 uh, tracks. Or I can go stereo, which uh, makes it you know half of the options because two channels are combined into one so six become three yeah and again i can go to audio hardware from here as well so i don't need to go to edit preferences and it's exactly the same settings so basically that's how it works um it does take some time to get uh, get your head around this but once you get it it's really simple and obvious now very often things uh get so to say messy and what to do when things don't work so first of all close all the programs that you don't use so all audio and vi video editing programs if you don't use them at the moment don't need them close them uh, cl also restart the program you're using right now so if adobe audition is playing up restart it second thing restart your computer third thing make sure that all the settings in windows are set to the same uh, thing. So, for example, 48 kilohertz, ideally also the same bits, but uh, the sample rate kilo in, in kilohertz is set to the same number. So, 48, for example, or 44. Then make sure that ASIO drivers are set to the same thing. Then increase the buffer size in those uh, ASIO drivers. Uh, reinstall ASIO drivers or try previous version, all the version of ASIO drivers. That could solve many issues as well. Uh, never give up because there is always a solution uh, and sometimes it does take a long time to figure it out. Just play with various settings until figure it out and obviously you can always search on the various forums and, and uh, ask other people for help. So I have other videos about uh, how I recorded other microphones and settings. Um, that I used as well, uh, which might you might find helpful. So links somewhere here or below. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. Yeah. So guys, you take care. See you in the next video. <laughs> bye bye.